Hello, hello, my friends. How are you? Sean Ferry here for Trek Culture, and I'm absolutely smothering with the flu. What we're going to do is we're going to finally, now that they've all been released, we're going to go through all of the ups and downs for the very short treks, which were released as a celebration of the 50th anniversary of Star Trek, the animated series. Uh, just to, to explain how this is going to go, I'm going to go through all the ups and downs for like the episodes in sequence, and then I'm going to run through incitation observations. I'm going to run through the uh, the Easter eggs at the end. So, with that in mind, let's get going. The first episode is called Skin a Cat, and it was written by Casper Kelly, who was in charge of the whole project of putting this thing together. And I, I'm going to start, well, first of all, I'm going to start with an up. It's just seeing that wonderful animated series style take on the new sort of Star Trek universe logo. I've really enjoyed that. So that was a lot of fun. The premise of the episode is that the Enterprise is under attack by a collection of Klingon battle cruisers. Um, so actually, oh, sorry, battle cruisers is my favorite ship. Uh, D7 or Katinga, take your choice. But that was, it's like, I enjoyed seeing that. Um, and the, the joke is that we use idioms without thinking where they come from because they mean a certain thing to us. So we get a gag based on the name of the episode where Kirk is basically telling Spock, don't worry, I've got an idea. There's more than one way to skin a cat. And Amres just turns around and says, what? I liked that joke. I have to say, I, I, I thought, yeah, because it's a funny sort of, well, yeah, of course, how would these things come across to a non-human? Um, and that was, you know, she goes, you know, how would you feel if I said there's more than one way to disembowel a human? I, say, I thought that was good fun. Um, the problem is, my first down is, that joke wears off like that. So unfortunately, it wasn't funny or interesting enough to sustain the episode. Um, there is a, you know, it was fun to see, you know, bigger fish to fry. Then we have the Antedian going, what? And you're like, oh, okay, same joke again, but still kind of funny. Don't get your knickers in a twist. And then you have the Nickersonian. So the joke wore off, but I have to say there was one good line. You know, the Nickersonians are a proud race. We serve Starfleet. I should report this to HR. That was an up from me. I have to say, because I just thought we've never had a HR in Star Trek. So I enjoyed that one. So that one was quite funny, right? Um, but then the joke just goes on and on. I've made an ass of myself. I've really screwed up. And there is sort of, a, no, there, there is a kind of a, a funny, guy, you know, the, the Klingons get another shot in and the screw head is going, I'm here to regulate water pressure. And he said, do you need anything on the bridge? And there's an explosion, the water comes out and he goes, oh, you were saying. The tone was slightly off. You know what I mean? Like. It didn't even feel like slapstick comedy. It just felt, it felt mean. That I think was my main problem with the humor of this episode. So my first down being the joke wore off. And then the second down being, it was humor at the expense of, as opposed to let's laugh with. And that felt very pointed and a little bit uncomfortable and unpleasant. The, the final gag where Kirk, in the middle of a battle, says, you know, well, every time I say something, someone pops up to get offended by it. Down. That is such ridiculously outdated humor. That is just not funny. Um, so for me, that was, it was a, what started as a funny gag became unpleasantly uncomfortable as the episode went on. And then in the middle of a battle, Kirk decides to go, oh, hang on, well, if this works, like, uh, it reminds me of that bit of dogma, you know, like men like us don't just fall out of the sky, you know, Chris Rock. Beautiful, big women don't just fall out of the sky, you know. OK, Kirk basically does that and then it takes a while to come up with this perfect woman in his idea who then turns around and says, how dare you be my perfect man? And then the Enterprise gets destroyed. Down. Then we go to Holiday Party. This was written by Claire Friedman. And first of all, animated st series style, Strange New Worlds Enterprise, that's an up from me. And of course, Bruce Horak as Hemmer, that is definitely an up from me. Um, 
And actually, because I didn't up him in the last one, Ethan Peck as Spock, up from me, uh, and Celia Rose Gooding, up from me, you know, loving the cameos. This one sets up, it's, it's the, the joke that we saw in Star Trek Generations. In Star Trek Generations, when Riker says, computer, remove the plank, Worf drops into freezing cold water. Everybody laughs. Data doesn't get the joke. Dr. Crusher says, Data, you've got to learn to be spontaneous, get in the spirit of things. And so Data goes, I understand, and pushes her into the water. It's not funny. It, that is what this is. So it's that joke in animated style. Spock is trying to show what he is calling a blooper reel to try and elicit laughs from people because it's people in unfortunate situations. Effectively, it's fail videos. The first one he shows shows a poor officer only being half beamed up, uh, which is horrific and kind of shocking. We haven't seen more of in Star Trek. And as Spock goes, blooper, because in his understanding, someone is not happy, therefore. The next one is self-deprecating humor, which I have to say, I actually thought this was quite funny. Um, when you have to bring breaking up with Spock again and Spock in the video has tears rolling down his eyes and then he turns around with tears rolling down his face and he goes, blooper, this was quite devastating. I have many more of these videos as she has left me for several men. And you know, it just cuts to Uhura going, Spock, are you okay? I thought that was quite funny. You know, this was Spock's attempt to make him the butt of the joke. Then what he does is like, ah, perhaps the bigger the blooper, the funnier the reaction. And so we cut to, um, it's that scene from the Battle of the Binary Stars where the Klingon cleave ship basically plows into the USS Europa, which then self-destructs. There is a thing in this scene where Saru is in his 32nd century uniform, whereas Giorgio is in her 23rd century uniform. And that was like, I can see the gag. That's like a very animated series style thing to do of have like things that we uh, inconsistency in animation. So I thought that was that was fine. However, down when you think of the opening episodes of Star Trek Discovery, we are being introduced to Michael Burnham. On the Shenzhou, you had Philippa Giorgio, you had Saru and you had Michael Burnham. So for this animated series or animated style episode, you have Saru, you have Philippa Giorgio, and you have one other character who is a white woman being, I think this, there's an English accent there. So at best, at best, they are erasing Burnham from this scene. At worst, they've whitewashed Burnham. Not only is this a down, this is my trellium down of the series of episodes. Um, in fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to it. My trilithium down is this because for the reasons I've said, when you think Star Trek Discovery, the first person that comes to mind is Michael Burnham. And I'm hoping that they've just cut her out in this scene because if they've whitewashed her, that's, there's just no coming back from that. Um, and that seriously tainted the rest of this episode. Then down, there's a joke about diarrhea and farting. Didn't care for that. Um, you know, even like there is a, the Spock tries to do a live blooper and doesn't really work for me. I have to say, I was more confused and annoyed watching this one. We then move on to Worst Contact, back to being written by Casper Kelly, and we get an up in the form of the animated style Enterprise D. Snot jokes, microwave fish jokes, um, disrespecting an alien culture, and Riker destroys their warp drive. Then we move on to Holograms All the Way Down, written by our friend of the channel, Aaron Waltke. Now, I was pretty much like everyone else. I was a bit like, okay, when I hit play on this, Animated series style NX01, absolutely an up. The return of Trip Tucker, absolutely an up. Great gag there in the battle cruiser firing on the NX01. Poor Trip is caught in an uh, explosion. Computer freeze program. And then you have Riker talking to Troy. So Riker taken up, belated up to Gates McFadden in worst contact. Apologies, I, I, I meant to give her an up. Then we have Riker and Troy, it's the events of the Pegasus and they're just about to walk off the holodeck. And then you have Quark 
says freeze program on the hollow suite taken up uh very sad to see garrick unfortunately doesn't speak so no andy robinson back for this one but garrick is there saying if you want proper propaganda you got to get the proper uh the proper toys or the proper uh, tools tools and toys and he says look with this i'll give you a free ferengi keychain and half price off root beer floaties and you know quite funny and then you get freeze program and you get tendy is standing there with mariner going that's how we got the romulans into the dominion war taken up that was lots of fun uh then freeze program and up zero is standing there with gwyn and rock talk um and obviously they're in a different animation style but to, to be to be honest it wasn't a shock to me when i saw that when i say animation style they're effectively cutouts uh, and that's not a shock to me because if you think of how much it probably would have cost to try and change them over to animated style. So um, loved, absolutely loved that they were included in this celebration of animation. Prodigy was there. That is my latinum up. And I'm very, very happy to say that. Then we have Freeze Program because we have Sulu taken up is frustrated with all this he said oh it's like the impractical joker all over again great fun then saru says pause so doug jones taken up hammer says freeze program i've already given hammer it up so that's great neelix ethan phillips is back taken up uh pause playback i yeah i enjoyed that uh and then we have trip again goes Freeze playback and Trip is so confused because they're now amalgamated. Riker, T'Pol, Trip, Spock and Uhura are like amalgamated to this one giant red shirt. I, I do have to give a down on the animation there. There was, I'm, I, I get why they did it. There was no reason whatsoever to, in this amalgamated clump of people, make T'Pol's breasts as so obnoxiously large as they are in this. And if you think, look, if you think on the screen, it just, it, the problem with me is it's kind of like, oh, Jolene Blaylock did not have a great time on the set of Star Trek Enterprise. So this just kind of feels like a, oh, that's a bit of a hangover of that. So that was definitely a down for me in this. Uh, and final up, Bonnie Gordon as the voice of the computer, very confused, saying freeze program. And that was it. This was a 99% inoffensive episode. It was funny. We had a load of cameos uh, easily my favorite episode of the bunch and if we'd had more of these then we go to the final episode which is walk don't run and this is the episode that is actually the celebration of the animated series so um our our writer paul sutherland made a good point it was like it was great to see the addressing of the uh of the anniversary it's a bit weird that this one was like four weeks after the anniversary so i do agree with that uh this possibly should have been the first episode this is a lovely fun episode tendy is effectively speaking you know breaking the fourth wall and saying the 50th anniversary of the animated series we're celebrating it because it allowed there to be more animation in star trek down not a single mention of prodigy in this episode but there and and it's a lovely it is a lovely celebration of the animated series we get a few clips from various episodes which is that feels like a bit of a nice celebration so that is an up from me and then we get what i thought was quite funny um this sort of back and forth bumping heads the you know the original animated series are going what do you mean walk don't run like what so like we were just nothing were we and tendy's like no no that's not what i meant at all sorry i i thought we were standing on the shoulders of giants uh, and the you know mrs is just like so now you want to stand on us you know and scotty's just like so what we're like just great big and fat that you're just gonna stand all over and i really like because it's exactly the kind of miscommunication that could happen they are just as valid which is the up and i really like that so i have to say i thought this was a good balance of comedy you know and then I, that's sort of like dissolves and you know scotty quite rightly says well you know we had the holodeck first with the rec room tendy quite rightly says yeah but it was just the rec room all you had was just landscapes and a blizzard um uh that she said we had you know cardassians you know, we get a bit of a clip show of lower decks and we had the borg and scotty goes yes yeah, so and then you had your orgy tendy's got nothing for that one and it looks like this is just about to dissolve into a proper fight when sulu and riker arrive on the bridge 
and Sulu says, you know, are we here to have a party? He's there with the keyboard, Riker's there with his trombone. And, you know, Tendi goes, well, it was a party, but now it's just an argument. And Sulu out of nowhere says, that's a shame, because look at these abs. Up. And then, do you know what? I like the song. If you want to live long and prosper, you've got to put love on your duty roster. Taken up. I like it. And then there's a gag about the Klingons are attacking at the end. And, you know, at least this time, Tendi goes, we, we should probably address that. So there it is. And that's the very short tricks. Um, I'll go into the Easter eggs now in a moment, but there were definitely parts that just didn't work. Okay. And there were parts that did. I do commend the attempt to do something new, to create new content. I, I, I do commend that. Um, and I think maybe with some refinement, this could end up being a bit more cohesive, closer to, say, the short treks than the very short treks. That's my two cents on that. So if you would be so kind, would you like to come and join me at Citation Observations? <music> Okay, so we have the whole overall animated series style. We have the original series Enterprise. We have Klingon battle cruisers attacking the Enterprise. Love me some D7s, so that makes me happy. We have Imres. We have Arix. We have an Antedian, so that's from the episode of Next Generation, Manhunt. Lovely to see that. None of these things are canon, so. I don't think the Nickersonians and the ass people and the screw people will count as eggs because they, they, they really went out of their way to say that these are not canon. Pete Holmes was quite good as Kirk. Sorry, I, I enjoyed him as Kirk, um, except the fact he gets the ship destroyed. Then we have animated series Strange New Worlds Enterprise. Uh, we have our lovely Enar in the form of Hemmer. We have the reference to that scene from the Battle of the Binary Stars. Then we move on to Worst Contact. We have an animated series, Enterprise D. Uh, of course, Riker, Crusher. The, these aliens appear to be quite inspired by the Talosians as well, which I quite enjoyed. Um, at one point, Crusher says to Riker, respect their customs, Bill. Now, it might sound weird that he's called Bill. This is a kind of a deep cut. We're going back to, I think, The Naked Now was the last time that he was called Bill, and it was by Deanna Troy. Um, he talks about, oh look, Gorn invaders, and then using a phaser destroys their warp core. Holograms all the way down, we have the NX-01, we've got Trip, Reed, T'Pol, and Mayweather. Uh, but Battlecruiser attacking the NX-01, so probably it's because of the reuse anim animation, which makes this easter egg even better, is that in season one of Enterprise, there was a Klingon Katinga class battlecruiser, a hundred years before it should have existed. Because the powers that be said, Oh, I like the design that you've done on the D4. Nah, stick a Gatinga in there. Then we have reference to the episode The Pegasus with Riker and Troy on the holodeck. We have Quark and Garrick and the reference to the Enterprise to the episode In the Pale Moonlight. Uh, and of course, Root Beer, he serves for Garrick, who has seemed to change his mind now to enjoy Root Beer after that time in the way of the warrior. Then we have the characters from Lower Decks. We've got Mariner, you've got Tendi, and you've got Boimler. Then you've got, of course, you've got Zero, you've got Gwyn, and you've got Rock Talk from Prodigy. You've got Sulu and Uhura, reference to the episode The Impractical Joker. Uh, we have Hammer again, we've got Saru, we've got Neelix, which makes me very happy. And then Riker, T'Pol, Trip, Spock, and Uhura. And of course, Bonnie Gordon is the voice of the computer. Then in Walk, Don't Run, we have Tendi again, so don't think I gave him, sorry, up for Noel Wells. The reference to the fact that it is the 50th anniversary of the animated series. We have Carlos Alizraki playing Scotty. Lovely to see him back in Star Trek. The reference to the rec room and the blizzard. Then we get a bit of a, a sort of a, a rundown of clips from Lower Decks, which is uh, Mariner's training program against the Cardassians. You have Boimler's test against the Borg. And of course, Orgy. Uh, nice deep cut here. At one point, Tendi's got six fingers on her hand, and as was pointed out by our very good friend, Jorg Hillebrand, that was something that was very common in the animated series style, that every now and again, extra fingers would just pop up on people's hands. Uh, fat cartoon eyes versus at least my eyes have whites in them. Love that. Uh, Sulu and Riker uh, with a keyboard and a trombone. Uh, post mainframe acid Cardassian 10 forward core. 
up. And of course, how many more times could we use the words, oh my. Space is indifferent and cold. There's quite a few different sources for this one. Um, one lists Stanley Kubrick. Why not? That's everything for our list on the very short treks. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope I didn't come across too grumpy. If I did, I blame the flu. Um, again, we do em we implore these people to try new things. Some will work, some won't, but let us never sit back and not try new things because that's how you stagnate. Look after yourselves. Make sure you're following our podcast that drops every Tuesday on the channel. Um, you are awesome. You are wonderful. Make sure that you live long and prosper. Um, for obvious reasons, things are very tense and sensitive in the world right now. So please, 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 now more than ever, be kind. Be kind to the people you interact with. Be kind online. Be kind in person. But from us to you, look after yourselves. We will see you very soon. Have a good week. Make it so.